It is a couple minutes to 2pm on the 2nd of November 2023 and I'm tuned into BBC Radio because they are just about to play for the first time the Beatles' final ever song, Now and Then. So unfortunately I'm unlikely to be able to play any clips from the final version of Now and Then in this video due to copyright reasons, so do go check it out elsewhere. But let me now tell you about how we wound up here, how we are over 50 years from the breakup of the Beatles and yet now, only now, are we hearing the final ever Beatles song. For the longest time, the last Beatles song, the last previously unheard Beatles song to be released, were the singles released alongside the Let It Be album in 1970, the last Beatles album to be released. And with John Lennon tragically dying in 1980, you would have assumed that that was the end of any potential new Beatles music. But in the 1990s, Yoko gave Paul a tape of four John Lennon demos recorded at his piano at his suite in the Dakota in New York. For any new songs to truly be considered Beatles songs, they would have to include contributions from all four Beatles. So these John Lennon demos provided the perfect way to finally release some new Beatles music. Sure enough, in 1995, with help from the Beatles' original engineer Jeff Emmerich and with Jeff Lynne from ELO producing, the Beatles released Real Love and Free as a Bird, which were based on these demo recordings by John. Now, of course, being demo recordings recorded onto a tape recorder in the 1970s, they weren't very high quality. And although the demos of Real Love and Free as a Bird were deemed workable, the demo for the track Now and Then was just too noisy to be used. As you can hear from the recording, not only does the vocal often get buried by the sound of the piano, but there's also a consistent hum throughout the entire demo due to the mains electricity. And now it's true. In 1995, when the Beatles were recording Real Love and Free as a Bird, they did have a go at also recording Now and Then. After all, they did want to have three new songs to release, one for each of their new anthology collections that were coming out. But after a short time attempting to work on Now and Then, it was decided that it wasn't going to work. George Harrison reportedly called it effing rubbish. So the song was shelved, but Paul McCartney continued saying over the years in various interviews that he did want to revisit now and then at some point in the future. <laughs> so that one, that one's still lingering around somewhere. I'm going to nick in with Jeff and do it, finish it one of these days. And sure enough, last year, the perfect opportunity to finally complete the final Beatles song came about. I'm sure you've heard about Get Back, the Disney Plus series directed by Peter Jackson that came out in late 21. This series involved Peter Jackson remastering much of the unused footage from the Let It Be sessions to create this new fantastic documentary. And one of the approaches that Peter Jackson took to remastering the footage is training an AI to recognize the sound of the Beatles' voices. That way he could extract from the audio recordings each Beatles' voice, allowing him to remix the audio in a much clearer, crisper way. So that meant they now had this AI system that was trained on John Lennon's voice. It could recognise and pull out John Lennon's voice from a recording. So that is exactly what they did. They used this AI to extract the voice recording from the noisy now and then demo. And the results were impressively usable. I know it's true. It's all because of you. And if I make it through it's all because So when we came to make what will be the last Beatles record, it was a demo that John had and we've just finished it up and be released this year. We were able to take John's voice and get it pure through this AI so that then we could mix the record as you would normally do. Now, to be clear, despite what some sensationalist news reports and tweets said, they haven't used AI to sort of regenerate the sound of John's voice or create an AI that sounds like John. They've just used the AI to separate John's performance out from the noisy recording. So armed now with this isolated version of John singing now and then, last year the surviving Beatles, Ringo Starr and Paul McCartney, set about completing now and then. And it very much was a case of completing it, because even the original demo version wasn't a finished song. Never, 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 never. 
there were still missing elements, missing lyrics, that Paul and Ringo would have to fill in. Now, of course, earlier I said that for a Beatles song to truly be a Beatles song, it would have to include contributions from all four Beatles. But, of course, tragically, George died in 2001. So, how is George represented? How is George contributing to this track? Well, back in 1995, when Ringo, Paul and George first had a go at recording Now and Then, George laid down some guitar work, which was thankfully saved through the years and has now finally been used in this final version of Now and Then. So George is there playing guitar. And yes, George did say that this track was effing rubbish, but Olivia Harrison, George's widow, is certain that George would be happy with this final recording. If George were here today, Danny and I know he would have wholeheartedly joined Paul and Ringo in completing the recording of Now and Then. There's also a few nice little touches that have been added to this track to really give it that Beatles authenticity, that Beatles magic. For example, they've allegedly actually taken isolated backing vocal recordings from Here, There and Everywhere, Eleanor Rigby and Because, and then repurposed those original backing vocals to provide backing vocals on Now and Then. Also, Paul has recorded a slide guitar solo in the style of George Harrison as a tribute to George. And finally, to really add that Beatles magic to this track, Giles Martin, the son of late Beatles producer George Martin, has put together a strings arrangement to complete Now and Then. As far as music and culture are concerned, we live in unprecedented times. Recorded music, uh, the technology, the art form, is less than 100 years old. So is it really going to survive the next 100, 200, 500, 1000 years? Yes, we have the means of recording and archiving all of the music and culture that we have today, but in a thousand years' time, will the average person actually still listen to any of the music that we listen to today? Well, I think if there is one candidate for a canon of songs, a collection of music that could possibly weather that storm, it's the Beatles. If you think about how Shakespeare has managed to survive through as sort of a archetypal example of Western culture. I think the collection of songs that the Beatles created is probably the most likely cultural artifact to survive the next millennia. So today, in a way, we have witnessed the final bookend in that what may be timeless canon of work. We've seen the last play that Shakespeare ever wrote, released today by the Beatles, and hopefully lasting for the rest of time. <laughs> 